Richard Dreyfuss is in the news. This story broke at the end of the week last week. He is calling out the patronizing inclusivity standards that are being implemented for the Oscars. He says it makes him want to vomit. It's very good. Quite literally. Words. Quite so literally. Makes me vomit. Yes. Uh, so it, it says, uh, I think we're in the end game now. Actor Richard Dreyfuss discusses restoring civics education and his fears for the nation's future. I didn't know he was such a big proponent of the Constitution. He wrote a whole book about the undereducation of the younger He's generations right. in public schools about civics, uh, which is an interesting thing that uh, – not a lot of people talk about. I also love the framing in this article. This is a Breitbart article. It says, asked what he thought of the new standards, which are going into effect next year. The Oscar winner who claimed to really love being an American <laughs> bluntly expressed his dismay. They make me want to vomit. I like really loved being an American. Uh, it says uh, yes. he, he explained further that the, that art shouldn't be governed by the governed by the latest moral fad because this is an art form. He said it's also a form of commerce and it makes money, but it's an art, which is something me and you go back and forth on all the time. Like where does the art end and the business begin for yeah. a lot of this? I I think that um. He's maybe focusing on the wrong things. What should um, he be focused on? I, I don't know. Like, is he claiming that there's some connection between... I don't know. The interview, I, when I watched it, it just felt yeah. very, like, disjointed. It and, could like, have been cut up pretty, pretty severely. He was throwing out a lot of opinions that didn't have any correlation with each other, but... Um, he he also like brought up Othello and said that he would love to play because Othello that was in blackface and I was like what? Because <laughs> he he refers to the 1965 version of Othello where where that was done. But he said you know that that's part of the art form and and basically endorsed it and said that he would love to do the same thing. Which men play women in the theater all the time. That's true. Yep. Um, but then there's also the discussion of like was that a mockery? Well, yeah, like, is that, like, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't qualify as a minstrel show, does it? Like, that's something completely different. What do you mean? Like, isn't there actual, like, it's not certain... not racial, yeah, obviously, so, but, um, I mean, yeah, his, his comment didn't exactly make sense to me. So he says, he, went, he, he also be, argued that he'd one... He'd be destroyed if he did that. He says one, he also argued one cannot legislate over the perceived slightings of others. Look, the, the art form is going gonna, is gonna to suffer as long as we start attaching statistics and quotas for anything, right? Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think he just comes from a different generation in Hollywood where that wasn't a consideration. Yep. But if he made comments like this um, and he were younger, he'd, his career would be trashed. Yep. I, I mean, yeah, but uh, at this point, it says uh, Lawrence Olivier was the last white actor to play Othello, and he did it in 1965. Some teacher got fired for showing that in, in their class. <laughs> Where? Uh, in, a, in a college or in a, like a high school? Yeah, okay. So uh, it says, in 2021, a China-born music professor at the University of Michigan was forced out of teaching a Shakespeare class and reported to the Office of Equity. Oh my gosh, the Office of Equity. Uh, civil Rights in Title IX. Uh, after showing the class Othello, uh, after showing the classic Othello to his class, which included students offended by Olivier's darkened skin. Okay. So he got in trouble for showing that film to people. That's bizarre. Yeah, because not everyone in Gen Z, Mary, is as uh, based as you. Therefore, they got offended by it. Um, he, okay. He said um, it's patronizing. It is. He says they're so fragile we can't have our, that we can't have our feelings hurt. We have to anticipate having our feelings hurt or our children's feelings we don't know how to stand up and bop the bully in the face. That's true. However, when I watched the interview, it was brought up in a different context where uh, the interviewer said this in regard to like LGBT, quote unquote, LGBT mm. books in kids' school libraries. Yeah. And he thinks that uh, that's a matter of public free expression. And I think... Uh, we all can find common ground here and say that there is no place for pornographic smut in children's school libraries, which is what has been found over and over again. Yep. I think that 
once again, it's just like a generational thing that he doesn't realize that's a growing problem and believes that it's something else, but it wasn't explained properly. Yep. Here's, I, I'm gonna we put all it have our screen. blind spots. Mm. Well, uh, I, I mean, another thing was he was like decrying the way that our political landscape has become so polarized and all the, each side is like throwing, spe like spewing venom at each other. But then they brought up his old tweets about Trump where he's like uh, using explicit insults mm -hmm. and you know calling him an idiot and all of this stuff and uh he's like straight up he gets asked like well isn't this you being guilty of the same thing that you're saying is a problem in the public discourse mm -hmm. right now and he was like uh maybe <laughs> he's he's like I'm gonna pull up the rude ladder behind me. I get to be rude to people, but you don't get to be rude. It was to some people. crazy thing that he said. I'm trying to find it right now. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna Hold pull up. Whole, call, I, I won't I won't repeat it until I figure uh, out. Here are a list, guys, of the framework for the new Oscar diversity quota represent diversity and representation quotas. So uh, it says right here: standard on-screen representation themes and narratives. To achieve a standard A, the film must meet one of the following criteria. A, uh, A1, lead or significant supporting actors. At least one of the lead actors or significant supporting actors is from an underrepresented racial or, uh, or ethnic group. Asian, Hispanic, and they do use Latinx in there. Really? Yep. Uh, black, African American, uh. indigenous, Indian Amer uh, Native American, or Alaska Native. Uh, Middle Eastern, North African, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander or other uh, underrepresented race or ethnicity. I like how they couldn't think like of aliens. any others. So they just gave up and just said, or any other. It says gender ensemble cast. At least 30% of all actors in secondary and more minor roles are from at least two of the following underrepresented groups. Women, racial or ethnic group, LGBTQ+. I love how they say women are underrepresented when I just, when we just on Friday covered a story where Netflix is now 60% led by women. You're lying and full of shit, you people. So this year was um, the 94th Sounds Academy right. Awards or 95th or something. Yeah. Only next year are they going to implement these rules. Well, that then by, by virtue, then shouldn't the general ensemble cast feature at least men, not women, if women are now the majority in, on things like Netflix? But then um, they're saying that they're only going to subject the best picture nominations to these yeah. categories. Look, I, I read through them and they're so uh, sweeping and general that you could honestly meet these requirements without even trying to, but it's the exercise of actually trying to prove it, which is so oppressive. Like the fact that we have this like nannying bureaucracy looming over an industry that's supposed to be about artistic expression yeah. with a threatening uh, kind Do of- Do this or else. Yeah, or else framing to it. And the fact that you need to file the paperwork to prove that you're following these guidelines in order to even be considered for nomination, it, that's the problem I see it Wait, so like, as the bureaucracy being the problem. Any of these movies that were nominated last, uh, this, this past Academy's awards season, they probably fit all of these categories and more, mm -hmm. ab like abundantly. But it's like the exercise of trying to make everyone submit the, the paperwork that I feel is like so much worse yeah. than the status quo. Like, like Which is said. just letting people naturally do what they're going to do. Yep. Like inclusivity is already the norm in Hollywood. If not, like affirmative action has taken us, as you said, in the over-representation direction. Yep. So it says, uh, main story and subject matter. The main story, theme, or narrative of a film is centered on an underrepresented group, women, racial or ethnic group, LGBTQ, people with cognitive or physical disabilities, or who are deaf or hard of hearing. Like, that is insane. Like, you're going to now legislate what stories can be told if you want to be... I, like, this is born out of Hollywood's old obsession with story with literally doing stories about LGBTQ for clout, which is what they did for decades. Look, they're still doing it. I mean, the storyline subject matter 
guideline makes zero sense to me because how how do you determine whether the theme or narrative of the film is centered on women yeah. it could just be a movie that's led by a woman and you don't need to categorize it as the theme or the narrative being woman that debases and dehumanizes women even more to say that all of the stories that they lead are whammon stories and just throw them in that bucket over there. It's also going to- It otherizes. It's also going to create a lot of resentment for people once these things, once these quotas are put into place for the people behind the scenes. I think that the, a lot of people are going to get hired and they're going to be like, look, the, you got hired, but you got hired because of a quota. You didn't get hired because you were the right person for the job. Just by implementing it, even if they are the best person the job, for the job, it's going to lead a lot of people to be upset about it. They're never going to be able to say anything because they'll be afraid of getting in trouble, but that's just going to foster bad relationships with people behind the scenes. They're also creating minimums uh, for underrepresented groups as casting directors, cinematographers, composers, costume designers, what if you're a, what if hairstylists, you're a, makeup artists. What if you're a casting director and you want to cast a white guy and they're like, well, we didn't hire you to cast white people. We cast, we hired you to cast non-white people because, oh my goodness, how could you possibly cast a white person if you're not white? Because they're the racists and they don't understand that that's not how normal people's brains work. Right. I also think that a big part of the like what was going on with um, Richard Dreyfus is it's not just being from a different generation. There's such thing now as like terminally online, and I think a lot of these problems are the problems that are thought of by the terminally online. And people who just aren't constantly on Twitter just see the world differently. Like he can say all those things and not see the hypocrisy. Because even if he t if he spouts some crazy stuff about Trump, as long as he's not sitting on his phone all day, it might not register to him the same way. I guess so. I just uh, I don't think that. And this stuff is only... he understands the climate that he's even talking to now. And this like, stuff it's is so only far for... past um, salvageable. You yeah. know. Oh yeah. Well, they they don't understand that. That this, like whenever I see people who are catching on to this stuff now, when they notice it in ads, when they notice it on television, I'm like, dude, this is your like we've been past saving. Hollywood has been past saving for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Like that's why people are pushing towards new media. Half the uh, standards that they've implemented now are mandatory. The industry access and opportunities one. They yep. have a minimum for paid apprenticeships or internships and. Um, then they also standard D is audience development, which is about like people in the marketing departments also have to be from, uh, under, and when you groups. hire someone based on what they look like, you're going to expect them to only know or care about stuff that is related to what they look like. Right. Which as I said, is just as, or more dehumanizing, yep. um, than just letting the, the industry operate as it is. I mean, that's not the uh, quotas and stuff. That's not how. Um, that's not how the civil rights era went about things. Nope. It was about changing hearts and minds, right? Well, they it's think not that about they can, that anymore. They think they can change. They don't care whether you actually believe it. They care that you comply. Right. They don't care if you actually believe that's in the what they're saying. That's the fundamental change. I think that's yep. like shifted everything. It's like it's not about whether you think that you're doing the right thing. We're just going to force you to do it at gunpoint. And because to a lot of them, it's power. It's not about actually helping other people because they don't actually give a crap about other people. They just want power and they just want the ability to control everyone else. And a lot of very shrewd people who are also evil have learned to attach themselves to good idea or to bad ideas, I guess. But to uh, what was once a noble idea has turned into authoritarian causes and they've attached themselves to the authoritarian aspects of these causes, not because they want to make ch good change in the world, but because it allows them to po take power over other people. And this is just one phase in, I guess, a, t a continuing like timeline of changes that the Oscars is implementing until some inevitable point where we decide we're diverse enough. I didn't, well, I mean, that we all know that that never comes. I mean, you would say that uh, it's when there's no more white people, right? Like that's really what it they is. want is that, that, it, that there's no more white people. Uh, it's because that comes from no an American, because that comes from an American culture of self-hatred. Um, 
that I noticed long before any of this stuff was going on that, uh, I mean, is it really hard to believe that they would want no more straight white men who make up the majority or straight uh, white people that make up the majority of this country when for decades these people have hated being from America to begin with? They, there's always been this undertone of resentment from commie California uh, and people like that who see anything not excessively progressive as evil. Mm-hmm. Like it was always going to end this way. I'm just tired of women running society. Mm. Like that's what this feels like. Me- it's just the, the professional managerial class, like post-menopausal women allow named me Karen. To, allow me to- sh- bulldozing all other considerations allow me to take control uh, of you but i but do it in a from a cause about caring i care about people therefore i'm going to tell you how to behave like this is what happens when women reach menopause without having kids yep and have not having progeny to worry about it's like this hand wringing and anxiety it really like just makes me like cringe like it it makes me like recoil it will never go and that's never going away as long as social media exists which is the format in which women do the best bullying women are able to control the narrative because social media is how you shame people now which is female centric so this never goes away ever you just constantly have a platform to complain exactly and as long as that exists this never goes away or at least i shouldn't say that as long as studios adhere to what these platforms allow to be pushed then yeah this never goes away uh, it's just a kind of a black pill yep uh i mean i see it as a black pill and i don't even really see what richard i was more excited about richard dreyfus saying like he's a fan of the constitution than the other stuff i mean like, i don't even care about the constitution that, anymore that uh that made I'm me too depressed to care, <laughs> to care about the constitution <laughs> He says, I, uh, I once worked for a guy who was making a film about the gangsters in the 30s. He replied and I said, why did you change this incident and that incident from re- this incident and that incident from reality? Because the reality was so much more interesting than what you created. And by changing it, by changing it, you made it simpler and smaller. I totally believe that you can make a great film or a great painting or a great opera out of the truth first. He said, try that first. And then if you can't do it, then makes up some nonsense. But don't tell me you can't do that. Uh, or that history isn't that interesting yeah that was in response to a question that was just complete like word salad like don't you think that we can use diversity to have a lens for a fuller understanding of where we were at in the past and like the movement toward the future and um kumbaya yeah question mark i yeah i didn't really understand that exchange at all because but the person who said it doesn't understand it either because it doesn't mean anything yeah it doesn't mean anything representing the ugliness in the past is like the only way to recognize it if you lash yourself in the back as an american thanks for watching listen to full episodes of pop culture crisis on spotify keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show bye guys